welcome to the grand opening, that's what I'm calling it, the grand opening of the Republican Victory Office here in Norfolk. I'm Anne-Marie Batterstone and we're doing a special edition of State and Local. So we're, uh, we're going to be going inside, we're going to have a few interviews with some of the dignitaries, and, uh, and that's what we're going to do today, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'm here with uh, Mary Gallagher, now she's been on uh, State and Local before, and she is helping to run this office, and she's going to tell us a little bit about how the office works and what they're going to do today. Now, uh, Mary, did you say that this was, did you say Super Saturday? Super Saturday. Oh, because right, I call it grand opening. Well, no, it's a little bit of both, but it's a Super Saturday, which is something the Mass Victory Program does. We do it once a month, um, right through to the to November, and oh. the goal is, is that, so, each Super Saturday, we have very large goals. We bring the candidates in, we bring vo all the volunteers in, and we try to make something like, like today we're going to make over 3,000 phone calls, we're going to knock over 800 doors. Now that's low, but come September and October, we're going to really need more people to come in and help us because we're going to have to reach much higher goals. But the idea of it is to get, show, to get out in the community with a vast number of people and sort of like, we just filter everywhere. So you see Republicans everywhere, and that's the point right. of it. And um, as the state committee woman for Norfolk, Suffolk. This is one of the areas I work with, Patricia, who is your state committee woman. Uh, and the idea of it is to get these programs and to get more volunteers out. And to, obviously, the goal is to get Republicans elected to office. Right. And um, the focus of the Mass Victory Office is the down ballot candidates. I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah, good. So, <laughs> what our focus is to work on the lower ballot candidates, your state rep state senator, um, selectmen, and then of course um, we have the governor council race which is with Brad Williams and our goal is to get Brad um, elected to the governor's council which is part of what we're going to do today. Right now we're currently making phone calls for Brad and then um, later in the afternoon we're going to walk with Sean Dooley who's running for re-election as your state representative and um, so these are the things that we do on a Super Saturday but these, pro these things go on all through the day. This pro office has been open I want to say since uh, mid-June and uh, it'll go right through to November and my sister Helen is uh, is the director and um, Brian Bogey is the deputy great guys and uh, my sister's pretty good too <laughs> well, listen, thank you thank, thank you, you so much Marie. okay thank you for Alrighty. your support all righty good okay so now I have with me Sean Dooley who is the state representative he lives here in Norfolk and he's been a big he's been a big uh, player in getting this uh, office open. Now, what, did, what was your involvement with that, Sean? Oh, well, the, my involvement was I wanted to bring the Mass Victory Office to our district, and so I went around and met with a bunch of building owners and saw who would be able to rent for a short period of time a, an office, and I you know, found the building owner here, and he was amenable for a you know, five-month lease, and so I was very excited to be able to, you know, any money we can bring into the district, then, you know, ho however it works, we can bring it here. So the state pay the state party pays for this. Correct. Pays the rent and everything. Well, Mass Victory, which is Mass a, Victory, is, and, yeah. and and this. Now, tell us a little bit about the setup in there. I probably maybe should have asked uh, Mary. But oh no, no. This, yeah, the, I mean, it's basically um, you know we have you know the, the basement has a lot of storage and extra tables for additional oh, it does. Volu volunteers, and then up here we have uh, a phone bank, so it's all computerized. Um, we have, uh, you know, so that way we can have, you know, if someone wants to call and make calls for one of the candidates, myself or one of the other candidates, um, you just basically put on a headset and the computer runs the whole thing and you just keep pressing it through and you can input it right through on the computer and it goes out and automatically dials and everything like that. So we pre program the list. Oh, it's so much easier now than when oh, yeah. we used to use the phone. Oh, yeah, we're actually having to dial, yeah. Now, there's parking around back, isn't there? Correct. Yeah. So I went back there the other day myself. Right. So we, there's some spaces here in the front. Yeah, and we try we try to mainly park in the back just so <laughs> oh, we don't... Oh, that's true. The you know, because, businesses because that way, you know, the, the credit or... union and Borks, we don't want to take up any of their right. parking spaces. So whenever possible, we tell everybody to park in the back, and we have space for another 30 cars or so in the back. So. Now, you have an opponent in November? Uh, well, we don't or know yet. Sure. I mean, we, 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 getting we, signatures, or it hasn't... Well, he, he didn't get, you know, he didn't get his signatures, and I've heard that he might run as a write-in, he might not run as a write-in, so I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know him personally, so. Oh. When, um, would you, when, will you have to, when will you know that by? When does that have to be settled? Um, uh, after the primary in September. So I, I'll know, you know, around September so, 8th, 9th, or 10th, somewhere so around the, there. So the state, uh, pri these local primaries are in September? September, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so then that's you'll... Yeah, so that's the that's the state primary is in September, beginning of September, and then the real election is November eighth. Yeah, if I'm well, remembering right. it correctly. <laughs> that's right around the corner. Exactly. So. All right. Very good. Uh, what do you? Is anything you're working 
find anything else that you find interesting now in the uh, no, I was just saying, legislature you know, we, we, or anything? I mean, we, uh, I'm, I'm still working on, you know, there, you know we, we just closed formal session and I was able to get, you know, able to override the governor's veto to get the prison mitigation money for, for Norfolk. Um, how did that? How did the how did the votes? Uh, we, we we did very well. We, we yeah we got yeah we had. So you uh, must have Democrats. Oh yeah. With oh, you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Exa exactly. Wow. So you know, then that's part of the job is you know, you go around and make sure you get enough people voting with us. And I, we were also able to override. Um, we got one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the uh, Norfolk Public Schools additional as well for the re roof repairs on HOD. Oh. So those were some you know those are what I was doing last yeah. week. Um, now I'm still working on a lot of my legislation, like to uh, make it illegal to smoke marijuana while you're driving. Unfortunately, that's a loophole in the law, you're and, kidding. And, and I'm still having to. Uh, that, that's, but they just don't address it. Right now, it's completely legal, unfortunately, because, because, because it's not addressed. Be, as yeah, a, as because, a, because as it's it, it's not. There's nothing in it unless they can prove that they're intoxicated yeah. beyond a level. Whereas you can't, you know, and I, it's basically an open container. It's identical exactly. to. Um, if you're drink, driving, exactly. drinking a beer, driving down the road, even if you're not inebriated, exactly, you get a you get a fine for it. So I mirrored the marijuana. So if you're smoking marijuana, whether it's medical marijuana or personal use, whatever, you know, or eating pot brownies, whatever it is, you know, you could get pulled over um, and, and and be given a fine. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the you know, I'm trying to get it released. The uh, the chair of the uh, judiciary is. Uh, Defense attorney, so he, the defense bar isn't in favor of it because they I don't want to have. So, so if somebody's eating while they're driving, that's that, no, no, that, eating of like a pot marrow brownie. But what about like I don't know, a little sandwich or something? No, that's like not that. illegal. Unless, unless you, you know, unless oh, you mean a brownie with with the with, weed with, in it? With weed in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, you so something that'll, yeah. I guess technically, <laughs> I guess, I guess technically, I guess technically, rum cake is illegal. But besides <laughs> that, I think you could, you know, unless it becomes, falls under the distracted driving, you know. It's it, just astonishing you know, that that. Because yeah, you see people driving the road, road eating pizza, and I mean all sorts of things. So, um, but yeah, we're, what we're trying to do is get get it so. Because what's happening is that the police officers are pulling people over, and it's marijuana is not as simple as um, alcohol, where you can give them a breathalyzer. Marijuana, exactly. there's no easy field sobriety no, test correct, for it, so right. it, you know, it goes through a lot more different levels. So, you know, the, our police officers. I actually got this brought to me by a couple of police officers. They're pulling people over who are smoking marijuana. And and they and they don't the kids don't even care they just you know just keep puffing away and there's nothing the police can do to them no, unless they can prove and you know I have the, you, you know, think they could wait till where they where they're I, going I, I had the attorney general sign off on it I had every single district attorney sign off on it I had the chief of police union sign off on it the police chief of police association and all the policemen's unions all signed off on it and supported it and testified it on behalf but the defense bar doesn't like it so it's still being held up. So. Now tell me something. Why is why would um, Charlie Baker veto uh, Norfolk getting the, mitig the uh, mitigation money? Um, he was just trying to cut the budget. Uh, but it's, yeah. it's money coming from them, right? I mean, but I mean, it's state money. But it's state money. So but, I mean, so he was just uh, trying to cut the budget. No, it's going to the town. It's, I mean, it's not like it's. <laughs> well, that, that's the reason I fought to override it. I was going to say I like to support my governor, but you know, when it's money going to the town, yeah. you know, there's there's plenty of other. I feel there are plenty of other wasteful programs within the state that. that doesn't come back to the town, especially mitigation because you know we support the prisons. Oh, yeah. We do all their all their um, all their medical and you know all their fire su support, you know, all their you know transportations to the hospitals, all those sort of things, which you know we're taking a prisoner to the hospital, that means we have to bring other people in to support the town. So it costs us money. And so we you know prison mitigation really makes us whole. Now wouldn't it does it wouldn't it I mean I <laughs> It also, I would think, would affect house values here. Some people... De definitely. I mean, <laughs> you know, but, you know, the, fa the fact that we have four prisons in Norfolk and... Uh, four? There's you know, part of, of Cedar Junction. Well, 90% of Cedar Junction. Is that right? um, Yeah, just the entrances in, in Walpole. Then oh. we have uh, Bay State, yeah. Norfolk House of Corrections, and Pondo. All right. So we have, That's right. So we have four. So, yeah, so obviously it does affect I our... I know, you know we're, we're not getting tax money you know, on all that land. We're not getting, you know, right. it does hurt our property values and things like that. So, you know, the couple hundred thousand dollars we end up getting from the state do, it really. doesn't really even come close to covering, you know, maybe it covers our fire service. Right. You know, what, you know the yep. amount of work that we spend yep. down there, and that's about it. And so that's the reason, you know, I push hard for that because, you know, I don't like wasting money. But, uh, you know, well, the, so you know that money, waste, you know, like you know our taxpayers shouldn't be. It's a liability for us. Well, and, 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 and reality is, you know, the population of that prison are not Norfolk residents. Right. I mean, they are coming from. We, we are supporting the entire state's prisoners, and we are 
absorbing 100% of the cost of having the prisons in our district and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, the fact is, you know, at the very least, we shouldn't be losing money by having having the prisons here. Now, there are other there are other prisons elsewhere in the state. Are they yep. also doing a mitigation like yeah, it's, it, it, it's all it's all one package. So that was that's the reason it makes see, it easier oh, for me to get you know other people involved. So we get you know Framingham and, and Shirley and Concord. Oh, right, you know, right, so we get right, those right, reps on ball on board, and so they're all able to. Uh, huh. We all work together to make sure we get that right. mitigation money passed. Oh, well, thank you for coming out. Oh, and thank you very much. Us. Okay. Have a great day. So, all right, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. And with me right now is Brad Williams. He lives in West Roxbury, I believe, and he's running for Governor's Council uh, as a Republican. So he's going to just tell us a little tiny bit about uh, what the Governor's Council is, and a little bit about his campaign, and then I will be interviewing him on uh, state and local uh, shortly for a full a full show. Oh, thank you for coming out here to Thanks, talk Anne to Marie. us. Thanks, Anne Marie. Thank you yeah. very much. Oh, it's great to be here. Yeah. Now, tell us just a little bit about what the Governor's Council does. Right. So, the Governor's Council in Massachusetts play, uh, plays a very important role. We don't elect judges here, but we do elect our governor, and the governor appoints judicial, pardon me, nominates judicial nominees for the courts, and then the Governor's Council actually approves those nominees. So, it's a very important part of our three-legged government. Uh, the Governor's Council also approves uh, appointments to the parole board, uh, warrants from the Treasury, justices of, justices of the peace, and notaries. Now, um, uh, uh, do you have an opponent? I do have an opponent. The incumbent uh, is from a Democrat from Milton. Oh, all right. Okay. Now, what's the, what's the breakdown, Republican versus Democrat, on that council? Uh, right now, the breakdown is seven Democrats, one Republican. So right now, <laughs> if Governor Baker has a nominee he really wants to get through, it could be blocked for partisan reasons. Absolutely, absolutely. And now, what are, what are the what are you be doing with your campaign? You just could tell us a little bit about what if you have any uh, what do you have planned for that? Well, <clears throat> thanks for asking. I mean, of course, here, we're here today in Norfolk at the Mass Victory Office, and we have a lot of volunteers out door knocking, making phone calls. I've been appearing at events all over the district. Uh, we have an active. Uh, Facebook site, Brad Williams for Governor's Council, and we also have uh, the website for social media, bradwilliamsma.com. So I'll be all over the district between now and November 8th. I don't have a primary opponent in September, so but, but I am on the ballot oh, okay. for November 8th. Now, what is the MA? Is that mas Master's degree? What, what is that? Bradwilliamsma.com. What is the MA for? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Oh. Because when your last ah. name when your last name is Williams, That's true. you have That's a hard true. time finding website names. So <laughs> bradwilliams.com has been gone for 15 years. I've been checking for it for a long, long time. So bradwilliamsma.com. <laughs> Learn more about the campaign, volunteer, donate, everything's there. I was thinking, gee, it's good that he's proud of his degrees. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't understand. Well, I do now. I mean, my experience is I have, I was an economics major uh, as an undergrad. I have an MBA from Northeastern in Boston. Oh. And I've been in the investment uh, world for 20 years. So. I actually. You must, look, you must be older than you look. I well, I'm 45 now. Well, so I'll take that. I like that. You look good too. So, but you know, in my professional job, we I have an investment firm. We do professional reviews of our money managers we hire for our clients. Uh, so that's something good to bring to the council. God absolutely, knows. but you know, I come as a non-attorney, so mm -hmm. that means that I'm not coming with any preconceived notions of what judges should be. My opponent has said he doesn't want any more prosecutors. Uh, being made judges, he wants to decriminalize heroin. He wants treatment centers in all the courts. I mean, his judgment on these things are not, is not very good because these aren't things that are ever going to happen. And people don't really. A lot of people don't want it. Right, right. I mean, well, when I tell people, not, not he that wants, that seems to matter anymore. Well, <laughs> well, the will of the people does matter. Everybody well, has one vote uh, this November. But right now, the big thing on the campaign trail is I talk about the governor's council. I talk about how I want to provide professional reviews for the nominees. And then when people's eyes start to glaze over, because a lot of people don't know what the governor's council is, I say, oh, and by the way, my opponent wants to decriminalize heroin. And everybody snaps back. Decriminalize heroin? With all the problem there is? Well, that's right. It's, it's oh you know, my God. in Massachusetts, Governor Baker and, and where I live in Boston, Mayor Walsh have spent so much time working on opioids. Exactly. And now his solution, you know, we have good solutions, Governor Baker's, Methods have been adopted by 44 other states. Oh, is that right? So, and he says, right. well, no, this isn't working. We should decriminalize heroin. It's just, it's not what anybody wants to hear. So it's it's yeah. not what uh, you know, law enforcement wants to hear. It's not what DAs want to hear. And it's not really what the people want to hear. Well, listen, thank you so much. Thank you, Emory. Thank you, and I'll see, we'll, we'll see you later on the, on the show. Great, I want to be on. All righty, okay. So that
And with me now is Norfolk's own Patricia St. Alban. We have a, two dignitaries from, from the town. And uh, she's coming here to help out at the Victory Office. Hi, Patricia. Thank Hi, you so much. Hi, Anne-Marie. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so good at this. Oh, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> so now, what's the, what can, you're going to come on state and local and tell me about the convention. Oh, uh, yes. I was interested in how it's run and then your experience, uh, too. Are we doing that now? Are we no, doing no, no, that no, 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 no. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was at the Republican convention just about two weeks ago, right now, out in Cleveland, and it was four days of sessions, and it was pretty uh, exciting and thrilling. And the bottom line is that Donald Trump loves this country. Absolutely. I'm not so sure about the other oh, side. Oh, please. So, I agree but is with there you. something about today that we should be talking about local candidates? And um, if, if, you, if there's anything that you know about, that you, anything you have, anything that you've well, been doing lately, or anything you might know. Well, obviously, we need people to show up and vote. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this is imperative for the down-ticket candidates, that they have to make a choice on the presidential election and come out and vote for the down-ticket questions, the ballot questions, as well as the candidates that we're trying to get out the vote for right now, today, down at this Victory Office, which is located in Norfolk. Um, they're set up to make phone calls um, so that we ID the voters on who's voting for whom, and then we get out the vote with all those calls that we identify now in the pre-session period so that we know who to call back the last couple of weeks of the election to make sure they know what day they're voting and to get them to the polls. People forget, you know. Now, it comes up upon people and they forget what day exactly. they're voting. So that would be the people that we, we did a, we took a shot of these uh, uh, signs here in the windows. So right. By down candidates, you mean the lower Right. Below. Well, obviously, this is the presidential candidacy right. was at the top of the ticket this year, and um, all the down ticket candidates would be all the local candidates and the ones that you've just interviewed ahead of me. Right. All right. Very good. All right. So if you're going to come on the show and talk about the convention, I, I looked for you. I, I, I must have missed you. I know you were on camera a few yes, times, but I was, I was watching, looking, but... Yeah, I, I um, apparently got interviewed by all the local Boston stations, one each day. We had a breakfast uh, where we had uh, someone come and talk mm. to us about, in fact, we had a woman come that runs uh, Trump's winery in Virginia. Very impressive woman, and she talked about working for Donald Trump as a woman and just how he's always promoted women. Women at the convention, his daughter talked about, Ivanka talked about the fact that I believe he has 53% women in upper management. So um, please, ladies, pay attention to this. Uh, Donald Trump is very pro-women, and um, his daughter Ivanka is a success on her own. Um, but this young woman that ran the winery was extremely impressive as well. Um, so, yes, um, the convention was very exciting from a number of angles. All right. Oh, thank you so much, oh, Patricia. Great. So thank we'll be, you. So thank then you we'll for being see. here. And Chris, too, that's behind <laughs> the camera that nobody can, can see. But thanks well, for being here, That's very kind here, of Chris. you. All righty. So we'll see you uh, on State and Local shortly. I hope so. All righty. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. you, Patricia. And with me now is Tim, Dr. Tim Hampton and he's running for state rep. Now, Tim, what, what is the district that you're running in? The district includes all of Norwood and four precincts in Walpole, precincts one, two, six, and seven, and it's the 12th Norfolk district. So it's all of Norwood, one, two, six, and seven in Walpole. Now, you're gonna come on later for an interview, but why don't you just tell people a little bit about what, you know, what, what your, uh, your goal is if you were elected state rep? Well, I am a Republican. My goal is to try to bring balance into the state house. It's a little one-sided to one party. That's for openers. Yeah. The other concern I have is when the governor wants to veto something that needs to be vetoed, he really doesn't have any support that matches the, the magic number, so I'd be an additional person uh, to do that. I'd also, once in, work with other uh, Republicans to try to get more people in. We need to increase our numbers. My goals, however, are to priorities or the economy. For one thing, I think we need to make business for small business uh, activities in the state increase. And we need to have a situation where people who own small businesses are treated fairly, you know, less regulation. Uh, for example, the, there was a bill that they were looking at recently regarding um, uh, when if you work for someone and uh, you sign this uh, form that says that you can't work within that area for a certain period of time. It's like a restrictive covenant. Right. And they really did nothing with it. So let's say you're in the high-tech industry and you want to move from one company to another, 
you know, it limits people's ability to get ahead, therefore they leave the state. How good is that for Massachusetts when we're a high-tech state? Now that's something, that's a state, that's a state regulation that, that is Well, they, they want them, no, it, they what want it, it, here's how this works. If you have sort of a restrictive covenant, you make someone sign it, it's a done deal. Right. What they'd like to do, although it didn't get through, is make it so that they can't do that. So it limits it limits uh, uh, basically mobility and business. Yeah, I know because my my, my vet, uh, one of the, somebody bought his practice and said they couldn't work within a certain area. But is it as the crow flies, or is it as the way you'd have to drive on the? You well, know, so that's yeah. It's typically <laughs> uh, a, a radius of a certain number of miles. Um, I'm a, a, a periodontist, a dentist who specializes in in, in dental surgery, gum surgery. And uh, at one time, many years ago, after I left Harvard, I went into private practice with another individual who asked me to sign one of these documents, and I refused. And uh, he said, well, I'll get back to you. And a few days later, he said, you know, uh, I'll, I'll have you in anyway. So I did join him, and uh, for various reasons, uh, we got along well uh, on a level regarding therapy and treating patients, but on business levels, we didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, since I hadn't signed this contract, I was able to open up my own practice within what would have been his radius of restrictive uh, practice. And uh, I feel like I've done a, a good job for patients over the last 22 years, providing a good service, helping people to maintain their teeth. I would have had to have basically left the area. Right. Um, I can see this too for other businesses, like high-tech businesses and things like that, where you know they, they would restrict people and people would move out of state. The last thing we want in Massachusetts is regulations or to create an environment where people feel it's better to leave to find work elsewhere Absolutely. than to stay here. Well, look what's happened in Rhode Island. I mean, that's a very left wing. I mean, that's, that's a solid Democrat down there, and they've had a terrible time. Really terrible. Well, listen, thank you for speaking well, with thank us. thank you for having me. And then me. We'll, be, we'll have you on the show. Thanks a million. All righty. Thank, thank you, Tim. Bye-bye. So that's it. I just wanted to have you folks see some of the candidates that are going to be in in and out of this uh, victory office here in Norfolk and uh, and you know give them some consideration and you can check their websites and when they come on the show we'll have the um, the website and everything for, the, for them so you can look further into their candidacy. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne-Marie Batterstone. I want to thank Chris again. Patricia already thanked him. Chris Labonte on camera and thank you for watching and we're this is Norfolk Public Access.